Imagine a structure so massive you could fit more than 20 Empire State Buildings inside. A giant cube that will be bigger than anything humans have ever built before. But that is just one of many mega-projects currently underway. Projects that are completely redefining the limits of engineering. From a dam that would be three times more powerful than the Three Gorges Dam, to the most extreme railway humanity has ever attempted to build. Here we are going to explore together five of the biggest and most mind-blowing mega-projects in the world. We are not just going to list facts, we are going to understand why they exist, how they work, and what challenges they face. Let's start with the fundamentals. What is a hydroelectric dam? Imagine a waterfall. Water falls from top to bottom. As it falls, it has energy. If you place a turbine in the path of that falling water, the water spins the turbine. That turbine is connected to a generator that converts that motion into electricity. It's like when you blow on a toy windmill. Your breath makes the blade spin. Here the water is the breath and the turbine is the windmill. For a dam to generate. A lot of electricity, you need two factors. Factor 1, quantity of water. The more flow, the more energy. Factor 2, height of fall. The greater the distance, the more force. Think of it this way. A drop falling from one centimeter versus the same drop falling from a 10-story building. Height makes all the difference. Perfect location. Deep in the eastern Himalayas, on the edge of the Tibetan Plateau, flows one of the most powerful rivers in Asia, the Yarlung Tsangpo. This river cuts through the deepest canyon on Earth. How deep? The Grand Canyon in the United States is approximately 1,800 meters deep. This canyon is more than three times that amount, over 5,000 meters in some parts. This place has both. Lots of water, a powerful river, lots of height, an incredibly deep canyon. That's why China chose this location to build the Medog hydropower station. Understanding the numbers, the station will generate 300 billion kilowatt hours of electricity each year. The Three Gorges Dam, currently the most powerful in the world, generates around 100 billion kilowatt hours per year. See, Medog would generate triple that amount. That quantity could power 300 million homes for an entire year. Strategic Location The river does something special in this region. It takes a sharp U-turn called the Great Bend. In that bend, the river drops 2,000 meters in elevation over a relatively short distance. Imagine it like a giant mountain slide. All that water falling rapidly from great height. Both factors maximized. But what's perfect for one purpose can be dangerous for other reasons. First problem, extremely remote location. Getting heavy equipment here is like delivering a piano to the top of Everest. Second problem, steep, rocky, and geologically unstable terrain. Third problem, seismically active zone. In 1950, this region experienced an earthquake measuring 8.6 on the Richter scale. It killed almost 800 people. The tremors were felt as far away as Kolkata. It caused landslides that blocked the river for eight days. When the natural dam broke, it created a seven-meter-high wave that killed another 500 people downstream. How they will build it? The project will have two main parts. Part 1. Five hydropower stations scattered around the Great Bend. The first began construction in July 2025. Why five instead of one? Think of it like taking stairs versus using an elevator. Four tunnels will cut right through the mountains to divert the river's flow. Why tunnels? Because the surface is too steep and unstable for open channels. They plan to finish everything by 2033, with an estimated cost of more than $140 billion. Important technical detail. Medog is a run-of-the-river dam. Traditional dam. Water accumulates behind a large wall, creating an artificial lake. You control when to release the water. Run of River Dam. Water flows constantly through tunnels and turbines, but does not accumulate. It simply passes through. Why does this matter? 
because Medog's effectiveness depends completely on the river's consistent flow. If the river decreases its flow due to drought or climate change, electricity generation also decreases. They do not have a reserve tank. The geopolitical consequences, the Yarlung Tsangpo does not stay in China. It crosses into India where it becomes the Brahmaputra, then into Bangladesh. Hundreds of millions of people downstream depend on this river for agriculture, drinking water, and entire ecosystems. Any significant alteration could disrupt agricultural patterns, collapse ecosystems, create water scarcity, and trigger geopolitical tensions in a region that already has a history of border disputes. Just a few kilometers away, another project is cutting through the Himalayas. The Transportation Challenge Currently, traveling between Chengdu and Lhasa, the Tibetan capital, takes up to two full days on winding mountain roads. The plan is to build a 1,600-kilometer railway that will cut that journey to just 13 hours. But you are not crossing flat terrain. You are crossing the Himalayas. The altitude problem. The higher you go, the thinner the air becomes. There are fewer oxygen molecules per breath. At 2,500 meters, you start feeling mild effects, such as faster fatigue. At 3,500 meters, many people experience altitude sickness, including headaches, nausea, and dizziness. At 4,000 plus meters, your body needs time to acclimatize, or you will have serious problems. More than half of this entire railway will be built at more than 3,500 meters above sea level. More than a quarter will be above 4,000 meters. The trains will have dedicated oxygen systems to prevent passengers from suffering altitude sickness. You need supplemental oxygen just to ride this train. The extreme engineering. Over 90% of the railway will consist of tunnels or bridges. Only 10% will be normal railway on solid ground. Why? Because the terrain is too steep and unstable to simply lay tracks on the surface. There will be more than 100 tunnels and 120 bridges. Several tunnels will stretch for more than 30 kilometers. The Yigong Tunnel will measure 42.5 kilometers, making it the world's fifth longest railway tunnel. Imagine being on a train inside a tunnel for 42.5 kilometers. At moderate speed, you would be in darkness for 20 to 25 continuous minutes. The construction phases. Section 1. 140 kilometers between Chengdu and Ya'an. Completed in 2018. Section 2. Lhasa to Nyingchi. Completed in 2021. First fully electrified railway in all of Tibet. Ya'an to Nyingchi, 1,000 kilometers, currently under construction. This is the part passing through the most geologically complex terrain. They started with the easier parts to learn. Now they are facing the hardest part. Like when you learn to swim first in the shallow end, then gradually moving to deeper water. The real challenges. If something breaks in a 40-kilometer tunnel, how do you repair it? The annual maintenance cost will be astronomical. And here is the important question. Who is going to use this railway? Tibet has approximately 3.6 million inhabitants. Very low population density. There are no large urban centers generating massive passenger flow. Once completed, it will be one of the most technically challenging projects ever built. From the peaks of the Himalayas to the shores of the Mediterranean. Geography. Between the island of Sicily and the Italian mainland Stemain lies a strait of water just three kilometers across at its narrowest point. On paper, that does not seem like much. But building a permanent crossing here has been one of Italy's most ambitious, most debated, and most technically challenging dreams for over a century. The three invisible enemies. Enemy one, the wind. Wind might seem harmless, but when you have a huge structure suspended in the air, it becomes a destructive force. In 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in the United States collapsed just four months after opening. The cause was winds of only 64 kilometers per hour that created oscillations which literally tore the bridge apart. The Strait of Messina experiences winds of up to 120 kilometers per hour regularly. 
almost double that. Enemy 2. The Currents. There are strong and constant currents. It is like trying to hammer a nail into a board while someone is moving the board. Enemy 3. The Earthquakes. The strait is located directly over a tectonic boundary between the African and Eurasian plates. In 1908, an earthquake measuring magnitude 7.1 destroyed Messina and killed over 80,000 people. Any bridge here needs to withstand winds of 120 km per hour and earthquakes exceeding magnitude 7. Engineering Solution Against wind, an aerodynamic profile like an airplane wing, designed so air flows smoothly without creating turbulence. Against earthquakes, structural flexibility, a counterintuitive principle. Flexibility is stronger than rigidity. A rigid building breaks. A flexible one sways and absorbs energy. Think of a tree during a storm. The trunk bends with the wind. It does not break. Record numbers. The main span will be 3.3 kilometers, the longest suspension span in the world. The two supporting pylons will rise to almost 400 meters in height, taller than the Empire State Building. It would be the tallest bridge in the world and the tallest structure in all of Italy. To Southeast Asia, to a country that already built one of the most celebrated airports in the world. And it's about to get an expansion so massive, it might as well be a completely new airport. Understanding the scale. Changi Airport Terminal 5 will be even bigger than all four existing terminals combined. It will be able to handle up to 50 million passengers every year, increasing the airport's capacity by almost 60%. Terminal 5 is the centerpiece of Changi East, a 1,000 hectare expansion complete with a new runway, taxiways, and even an entire cargo complex. There will be a new transportation hub built right into the terminal, seamlessly connecting passengers to trains, buses, taxis, and potentially even ferries. Additionally, an entire urban district meant for business and lifestyle destinations, shops, restaurants, offices, hotels, and even apartments. This expansion is being built anticipating a doubling in passenger volume over the next 20 years. Cutting edge technology, Terminal 5 will make use of cutting-edge technology at every step. AI-powered aircraft tracking. Fully automated baggage handling systems. A fleet of autonomous people movers. Some tasks, such as monitoring aircraft, finding passengers, and loading baggage, will be done completely without human intervention. Dramatically saving costs and time. Potentially reducing delays, but also cutting down on jobs. Modular design. Instead of one massive fixed concourse, Terminal 5 will feature modular subterminals. Think of Lego blocks. These can be expanded during peak travel seasons or scaled down during quieter periods. They could even be isolated from each other in the event of another global pandemic. Although connected to the rest of Changi Airport by underground tunnels, this entire terminal is a completely separate building. Construction officially began in May 2025. The terminal is expected to open in the mid-2030s. If you thought the previous mega-project was already massive, wait until you see this one. Understanding Volume First, let's clarify the difference between height and volume. Height is how tall something is from ground to top. Volume is how much three-dimensional space it occupies. A needle can be very tall but have little volume. A cube might not be very tall but have massive volume. The Mukab won't be the tallest building in the world, but it will be the biggest structure by volume. Impossible numbers. Welcome to the Mukab. A perfect cube. Each side measures exactly 400 meters. To calculate its volume, 400 times 400 times 400 equals 64 million cubic meters. You could fit 20 complete Empire State Buildings inside and still have room to spare it will be approximately five times bigger than the current record holder, dwarfing anything humanity. The Mu Cobb will contain an entire city within its walls. They plan to place a colossal dome inside the cube, covered either by a gigantic screen 
or a holographic display. A realistic comparison is the Las Vegas sphere. The cube screen would need to be more than 20 times larger. The idea is to make visitors feel like they are at the bottom of the ocean, on the surface of Mars, or in a magical fantasy realm. At the center, there will be a spiral tower full of restaurants, cinemas, and hotels. This tower alone will be larger than the Eiffel Tower and the biggest indoor structure ever built. There will also be towers at the corners of the cube, packed with more rooms and facilities. The top of the structure is planned to be turned into a giant garden. In total, the entire megastructure could accommodate 250,000 people. The design is inspired by the modern Najdi architectural style. Its outer facade will be covered with intricate geometric designs. The building will be positioned to dominate the skyline from miles away. A project of this scale comes with extraordinary engineering challenges. And to be honest, we are still pretty much unsure how exactly they are going to pull this off, assuming it is even possible in the first place. Despite all the odds stacked against it, construction on the Mukab has already begun, with millions of cubic meters of earth excavated for its foundations. Construction is supposedly set to be completed by 2030. Whether that timeline is realistic or not, you can make up your own mind. So what do you think? Which of these mega projects will be completed in the near future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments.